in 2005, I was looking for ways to upgrade the signal and to give us a stronger signal to make us penetrate more of not only the Space Coast, but the entire East Central portion of Florida. And I had looked around and came in contact with the people who owned 1060 and uh, AM 1060. And finally, after several years of on and off talks, we were finally able to come to an agreement almost overnight after all those years. It really came about very quickly. And uh, within a month of uh, some very quick negotiations, we took over a week ago the dial position of AM 1060 WMEL. Not physically moving, but moving frequency-wise, our frequency from AM 1300 down the dial to AM 1060. Again, the reason for doing that is AM 1060 is a 50,000 watt signal. And for those of you who may not be familiar with wattage and what all that means in radio and television, 50,000 watts in radio, in AM radio, is the strongest that you can be authorized to have. There are not very many stations in the country that are 50,000 watts. And we really provide coverage now for an entire area of East Central Florida that we were not able to reach in the past when we had our 5,000 watts at AM 1300. Now our signal can go from, or does go, from uh, Daytona Beach, north of Daytona Beach in reality, I believe Ormond Beach and thereabouts, uh, all the way down to the Palm Beaches and uh, heading over to the west uh, in downtown Orlando. You can hear us like we're broadcasting uh, with an antenna right there in downtown Orlando. So really a tremendous reach, uh, the ability to come in contact with so many more listeners. The population of, of uh, Brevard County, I believe right around a half million. Now we're looking at a potential uh, coverage area of reaching over two million people. One of the big changes in our new dial position at AM 1060 is the fact that we are going to become the new home of the Florida State Seminoles and their football team. For the past 25 years, WMEL Radio had been the home of the Florida Gators. We have over 25 different types of talk shows on the air. In addition to our talk shows, we're very heavy into sports. We have the Tampa Bay Rays, the uh, Florida State Seminoles, we have the Orlando Magic, uh, we have NASCAR, uh, we're also going to have the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars as well. So we have a lot of sports, co sports coverage, let alone we're bringing back the uh, very popular Friday Night High School Locker Room Show, and uh, that'll be a very popular addition to our lineup as well. During our changeover from AM 1300 to AM 1060 WMEL, the response, the reaction of our listeners and the advertising community has been beyond our wildest expectations. In fact, we've had uh, many advertisers, potential advertisers, new advertisers coming to us, calling us, saying they heard about the change and wanted to become a part of WMEL Talk Radio. And we also are open and available to talking to any potential advertisers now reaching from Volusia County, Orange County, Seminole County, of course here in Brevard County, all the way down to the Palm Beaches. Uh, we're happy to entertain anyone who is interested in advertising with us here in our diverse programming of uh, talk, news, and sports on WMEL Talk Radio AM 1060. One of the big advantages to not only having a 50,000 watt signal here on the east central portion of Florida, but it is to be involved in the digital age of communications. And now, no matter where somebody is at in the world, they can receive our radio station with our live streaming that takes place 24-7 on WMEL. In addition to streaming live audio on 1060WMEL.com, we've entered into an exciting agreement with SpaceCoastDaily.com in which our live audio streaming will be available on their website as well. Simply go to SpaceCoastDaily.com, 
there will be an icon on there to click on WMEL Talk Radio, and you'll be able to pick up our audio streaming on there as well. Very excited about that. Our programming 24-7 on their website as well. It's exciting. We're happy to be associated with such a great organization, and uh, we're looking forward to that, helping to expand our reach throughout the world. WMEL Talk Radio historically has been known throughout the years as the home of the Hurricane Hunters, um, a uh, title that we're very proud of because during the past hurricanes throughout the decades, WMEL Talk Radio has been there 24-7. In fact, uh, 10 years ago when we had the three hurricanes that hit us almost back-to-back -back simultaneously within a course of a month or so, uh, we were the only radio station to stay on the air seven days a week, 24 hours a day, taking calls for and about the hurricanes. We suspended all of our programming to make sure that our listeners were up to date with what was happening with the hurricanes. Also, something else that we're very proud about in our history at WMEL Talk Radio, and that is our coverage of the space program. If it's space, it leads with us. Uh, it's the thing that's important to us here on this portion of Florida, the east central portion of Florida, and uh, we're very happy to say that during our 25 years of existence here at WMEL Talk Radio, we have covered every space shuttle launch, and now that we're into rocket launches from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, we carry every rocket launch as well. So when listeners want to uh, go to the beach, they're in their car, in their backyard, and they want to hear what's happening with the launch of a rocket, all they have to do is tune in to AM 1060 WMEL or go online at 1060WMEL.com or go to SpaceCoastDaily.com and they'll be able to hear all of our coverage live. WMEL Talk Radio was uh, actually the second oldest radio station on the Space Coast in Brevard County. WMEL signed on the air in January of 1956, and at that time there weren't too many people living in Brevard County. I think, actually, we were known as the Mosquito Coast, if I'm not mistaken, back in those days. But uh, nonetheless, WMEL has enjoyed a long history on the Space Coast, known uh, back in those early days for our news and uh, music. We were not a talk station then. Uh, talk really was unheard of back in those days. Moving a little bit more forward, uh, back in the 80s, uh, 70s, and 60s, WMEL Talk Radio was in reality WMEL Music Radio, and uh, considered by many to be a very popular music format at that time, playing, I think, uh, for the most part, rock and roll music, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from what I've been told. Then, uh, moving into the late 80s and early 90s, uh, WMEL continued playing music, but hit some difficult times due primarily to the fact that the radio station was owned by an absentee owner out of Ohio, and there really was no uh, direct supervision of the radio station. So uh, the radio station, after a while, was turned off the air in, uh, let's see, it was on Halloween in uh, 1991 and it was turned off the air and didn't go back on the air until we came in in 1992 and that's when we started WMEL Talk Radio. At that time, Talk Radio was new for the most part here in Brevard County. Not too many people were doing it and I don't believe anybody was doing it on a full-time basis. We were doing Talk Radio 24-7 most of it was locally originated from our studios. We used to be located on Turtle Mound Road in uh, Melbourne. And then uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, mid-2000s, uh, we uh, moved to AM 1300, WMEL, and moved our entire format to our new studios as well, located on Plucky Bomb Road. My background in radio broadcasting started, uh, believe it or not, when I was in high school. I grew up in the Tampa Bay area in St. Petersburg and went to work at the age of 14 for a station in the Tampa Bay area called WLCY. 
Back in those days, WLCY Fun Radio 138 was a huge station, as we call it in the business. It was a monster. And uh, everybody who was listening to rock and roll was listening to our radio station. But I started there at the age of 14. I started as a gopher, doing anything I could just to be in the radio station. Uh, my particular shift was on Sunday mornings. It started at 4 a.m. and went till 12 noon. I really wasn't on the air. They didn't let me on the air. I guess they knew something that I didn't. But uh, at the same time, my job was to play back all of the public service programs back in those days that radio and TV stations were required to do on a weekly basis. So we had eight hours of reel-to-reel -reel tapes that had to be played back. This was long before automation and before we could pre-record anything. So I had to play back those programs and that was my first job in radio going back into uh, 1965 when I started and then coming full, uh, full speed ahead. Um, after that, I went into the military. I was in Vietnam. I did uh, some freelance work for the Armed Forces Radio and TV Network while I was in the southern portion of Vietnam. When I came back, I went back to work for WLCY, but very shortly after that, I think within about two weeks after coming back from Vietnam, I moved to Miami, and that's when I got my start in talk radio. I went to work for WKAT Talk Radio, and, uh, and back in those days, we were only one of five, if you can believe this, one of five radio stations in the country that was doing talk radio. The reason for that, compared to nowadays, the reason for that was advertisers did not really want to talk to any radio station that appealed to listeners over the age of, get this, 35. They thought that was a very bad demographic. They wanted nothing to do with that. So therefore, very few stations, well, there were only five of us in the country, who ended up doing talk radio. But obviously, talk radio has evolved. It has really grown. It has prospered over the years. And now, I believe, at last count, there are, I believe, about 1,600 radio stations in America doing some form of talk, either on a full-time basis, part-time basis, but nonetheless, they consider talk radio their full-time format. Following uh, WKAT in Miami, I went to Detroit. I was at WXYZ Radio in Detroit. Those are real call letters. A lot of people don't believe that, but they're real, WXYZ. We were owned by ABC Radio and TV and uh, had a great time in Detroit. Uh, spent almost 10 years there. Moved back to Miami following that when WXYZ was sold by ABC. Moved back to Miami, went to work for WNWS Radio in Miami. And then shortly thereafter, while I was at WNWS, I realized that if I wanted to control my own destiny, or at least part of my destiny somewhat, uh, the only way to do that, at least in my opinion, was to be involved with ownership. So I set off on a course to have my own station. This was back in 1988, and my first radio station then was in Fort Myers, a station called WDCQ, great radio station, turned that into talk radio. After a period of time there, I was looking for a new station to purchase, and that's when WMEL came on the scene, and uh, the rest is history. 